Good evening, and I'll say good evening to Nigerians. Um, basically, I will say that I'm not going to comment on um, the bill in the House of Representatives because the case is right now before the court of law, and it will be subsidies for me to speak on it. But I can speak on um, the, I can speak on the bill in, in the Senate. Because uh, the bill in the Senate is a conjoined twin with the one in the House of Representatives. They, are, they all have the same characteristics, the same um, details, uh, so to say. And I want to say that that bill is anti-people, that bill is anti-God, that bill is satanic, that bill will infringe on the fundamental rights of Nigerians and myself inclusive. And it is so laughable that the National Assembly did not take a detailed look at that bill because Section 74 of the bill in the, in the Senate is actually delegating the powers of amending laws and that act itself to the minister. I mean, that is like the National Assembly now or the Senate in specific terms um, relinquishing their powers to amend laws to a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And I think that is laughable. That bill will take away the fundamental rights of Nigerians. And I've been, people have been saying that uh, you cannot actually stop a bill until it is passed. And I said it is not true. If um, For those who are um, um, lawyers, they will know that um, there is a case of uh, A.G. Bendel versus um, Attorney General of the Federation in 1981, where the Supreme Court held that um, the issue of legislative processes starts with the uh, first reading of a bill and that despite the fact that the powers of the National Assembly to make laws is predicated upon the provisions of the Constitution, it must be in accordance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And that powers to make law must also not conflict with Section 46.1 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which says that the fundamental, anywhere the fundamental rights of individuals is going to be breached, or likely to be breached, likely to be breached, not even when it is breached, that every Nigerian has the power to approach the court of law. And that is exactly what we are doing. And I can tell you that... If I may come in quickly of that on bill, what you raised... Definitely is which, sorry, apologies. You, you raised the issue on fundamental human rights of Nigerians, and you raise uh, the issue on the Section 74 of that bill. That bill is talking about the powers of the minister. It does not look like it talks about infringing on the rights of citizens. Is there any other areas you think that is uh, against the rights of citizens in, uh, in your objections? I, I will, I, like I will tell you, like I just told you, that over eighty percent of the uh, sections of that bill definitely contravene the provisions of um, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, including the fundamental rights of uh, Nigerians. But in quick um, um, response to that, I will tell you that fundamentally, the 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 provisions of the Senate bill. If you look at that bill, section, um, sorry, I, I'm, I'm just going to come to that now. If you, if, you, if you look at section 8, section 9, section 10 of that bill, section 5 of that bill talks about national emergency um, bill. Section 6 also will infringe on fundamental rights of Nigerians. Section 8 of that bill in respect to forceful release of health information of citizens also is an infringement on your fundamental right because your medical um, information and health information are your personal information and no law can force you to re relinquish that. Section 11 of that bill again also quickly. destruction Senator, of food, animals... Se sorry, if I may butt in quickly, have you read the infectious disease bill in the United Kingdom, for example? I want, I want to tell you that there is nowhere in the world, even in the Western world, that everything is allowed, that they have a draconian, satanic bill like this. I've gone through the, 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 the bill right now that has been operational in the US, in Canada, in Germany, in the UK. None of them have 
affronted the rights of citizens like this, like the, the, like, like the one put together by the, the, the National Assembly of Nigeria. It is so funny that even the, the right of the National Assembly to make laws and to amend laws was relinquished in that same bill to a minister, an appointee of uh, the president, the minister of health. And the too much power was arrogated to the director general of um, NCDC, who have power to arrest, who have powers to arrest without warrants, who have powers to shut down any building. He has powers of exemption to exempt anybody, no matter what, what who is concerned. And then where is the powers of the courts to, 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 to grant um, warrants? Where is the power of the court to enforce arrest? All these have been taken away and you're not already given. Oh, Senator Mela, I, if I may quickly the ask you this. Where did the director general deem fit? Yeah, you, I know you have a lot of friends in the National Assembly. These are uh, your colleagues. Some of them are, in fact, Senator Utazi is a member of your party. The man who raised uh, that bill, uh, who moved that motion. Have you been able to uh, relate with them to say, this, I'm a former member of uh, the National Assembly, and these are my objections on the motion or the bill that is being proposed. Have you been able to really relate with them on that? I want, I, want, I want to state that this bill has nothing to do with political party. This bill has nothing to do with being a former member of the National Assembly or a present member of the National Assembly. It has to do with the fundamental rights of Nigerians. It has to do with the fundamental right as Nigeria is a signatory United Nations Charter on African and People's Rights. Nigeria is a signatory to African Charter on uh, Human and People's Rights. So, and if we know that the fundamental human right, according to Section 4 of our Constitution, is not debatable. And Section 1, 3 of the Constitution have said any law that is in conflict with the Constitution to the extent of inconsistency shall be null and void. Then why are we bringing laws that will confront the fundamental rights of individuals? Section 16, uh, at this Section point, 17, let, me, let me quickly also uh, ask you, apologies, you understand, Senator, on the issue of um, separation... possible vaccination. And the truth of the matter... The, all right. I wanted to ask you about the How issue How can you be talking of, about forceful vaccination in this period? Is there, the, the senator said there was nothing like that. Senator Otazi said there's nothing like that in that bill. There's nothing like what? The forceful vaccination. It is, it is there and it is written in black and white. Let Senator invite myself and Senator Otazi to a public debate and we will dissect the bill. And All I will right. tell you it's... that Section 54 1B, Section 54 3B, Section 35C, uh, and Section 3 1 of the bill, Section 28, 29, 43 of the bill, all are talking about forceful vaccination. And the brain behind this is Bill Gates. How can a man who is campaigning for depopulating the earth? Be the same person saying he wants Sen to save the Sen world. Senator, Sen Senator Dinamara, you you've just made a claim now that can you substantiate the claim that you've just made? You just mentioned the name of a person that uh -huh. you are not able to validate or uh, uh, validate your claim as the relationship of can, the, man, the man and the bill you have raised now. I, I can validate it by the exposures we have received, by the information we have received that Bill and Melinda Gates are the ones campaigning year before now about depopulating the earth. And the same couple now talking about saving the world through vaccination. So I want you to look at the correlation. Does it add up? If, if, How can if you say that, for Senate, uh, the Senator Malaye, isn't that too person? dangerous to, to put the links? Now, when you're saying, they are, if that's what you claim that they are campaigning, but if you say they are the ones campaigning or they are the ones backing this bill, isn't that way too far? Have you been able to substantiate that, that they are directly behind I, this bill? I, I, am, I, have not, I have not said, I have not said, excuse me, please, I have not said they are the ones backing the bill. But I can tell you that they have an interest because NCDC is being sponsored by the, by the same people who are the sponsors of NCDC through the foundation that belongs to them. 
and all right, Senator, is, before, before is, I allow you to go, those are very strong NGC claims that you are making. And uh, unfortunately, General. you may not be able to substantiate. But let me ask you this. You believe in the issue of separation not, of powers. I have, not, I, have not made, I, have not, I have not made, I have not made any categorical claim. But what I'm telling you that there is inference that, I, and, and I still stand upon what I told you, that the man who is campaigning for depopulating the earth I want to know, I want to be schooled, I want to understand how that same person is the one who wants to save the world through a vaccine. All right, Senator, if you, like, if, if you could answer the question that I asked so that we can, we, we can conclude this uh, conversation on this bill. Uh, you believe in the issue of separation of powers, isn't it? Thank you. Senator Malai. Sorry, I, I lost you there. Yeah, I said you okay, believe you said, in, the, in the separation in... of powers. Of course, I, as, as, as a lawmaker and as a law student, I believe in the separation of powers. So, do, do, and, and you hope that the process as, as of lawmaking... And you believe that the, the process of lawmaking can be impacted by an external influence, either by any other arm of government. Section, section 4, 8 of the Constitution is clear that the powers of the courts, in fact, they have jurisdiction over the laws that we make in the National Assembly. And that is why once there is a need for interpretation of those laws, you must go to the court to get exact interpretation for the law. The lawmakers cannot interpret the law they make. So what we have done is to go to those who have the constitutional powers to interpret the laws that the lawmaker make or in the, in the process of making, and which is the court of law. And that's why we have gone there. So it is not interference with the powers of the legislature at Senator all. Senator Dino Malaya, I must sincerely thank you for your thoughts tonight and for coming on. Senator Dino Malaya, former lawmaker, thank you so much. Thank you very much.